In today's video, we are going to talk about product design. What is product design and who is actually doing this job? So we all have been there where you are actually using different products and when you start using them, you just don't feel anything for them. It's just something that you have to use. It's just nothing great. It's just something that, well, you need for your work, but it doesn't give you any nice feelings or you don't actually fall in love with the experience that you are having while you're using this product. On the other hand, you have these other products when, that when you start using them, they're easy to use, they're intuitive. You easily find the answers to your questions and to your needs. So how do companies actually achieve this kind of level of engagement from the user point of view towards the product? Well, that is product design. So when you're talking about product design, what you want to achieve is that a product is first of all usable, second, that it's actually useful, but also finally, that it's an enjoyable experience for the user. The fact that a product is useful means that the product actually is solving a specific problem for the user. This means that, at least to a certain degree, your product has found a product market fit. It is solving the problem for a certain customer, and it actually does it in a, in a reasonable manner. That a product is usable means that users actually can start using your product. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily easy to use, it's just that there is a way for the user to find a solution for the problems that they are trying to fix. But making a product usable is not setting the bar very high. So what you want to achieve with product design is that you want to make your products enjoyable. You may want to make sure that people actually really like to come back to use your products every day, that it's not a struggle to try to figure out how to set up your products, how to configure them, that they're really heavy on the UI where they have to define a ton of uh, different dialogues, components or options in order to achieve what they need. You want to make it really easy for them to start using your product, learn how to use it, continue using it all the time, and you don't want to make it very difficult for them to actually get to the solutions that they are trying to achieve. This is easier said than done. Getting into a very easy to use, simple and enjoyable experience is a lot of work. It requires a lot of research and it requires a lot of work from your teams, from your designer teams, to actually find that right scope for the product design. So how can you actually get to a really enjoyable product design? So first of all, you have to understand, as always, the problem from your users. What are you trying to solve for your users? And remember, you are not trying to solve the same problem exactly for all the same users in the same way. What companies typically will do is that you define your customer personas. Who are going to be the end users that are actually going to be using your products to try to find a solution? Here, what product designers do, they try to have a very deep understanding of the user needs and of all these different user personas needs. So then they can start formulating the actual personas with their profiles, their different needs, but also even how these people actually behave. So not just on the needs that they have towards the product, but also how this typical persona is. What is the typical profile of a persona? So companies tend to even actually build uh, personas with names and defining what are their uh, different personality traits in order to better understand how they are going to be solving the problems for those different personas. It's much easier than to define the stories, the use cases, and the different uh, UI, UI components that you're going to need to actually make the experience for those personas as enjoyable as you can. Again, this is easier said than done. It's not so easy to put yourself in the user's shoes. It requires an attitude and a way of working and, of course, the empathy to try to understand those needs and try to actually reflect on them and come to the best solution possible. It also requires a lot of iteration with those potential users to try to understand the problems, but also validate the potential solutions that you are building when you are a product designer. 
how can you actually share those uh, mockups? How can you share those prototypes with them to get feedback and actually iterate with them and together with the engineering team in order to develop those really nice experiences for the users around your products. So how do you know when you have created a really enjoyable experience for your users? So there are different metrics that you can use and you can think about when you're trying to see if people are really enjoying the experience. So you could think about retention, but retention doesn't mean necessarily that your people are enjoying the experience. It may be that there's no competition enough. It may be that for whatever reason, they had to use your product, but they cannot switch. That doesn't mean that the experience within the product is the best or even the most enjoyable experience for the end users. Probably the best metric to understand if people are enjoying your products is MPS. With MPS, you can see if people are actually not just finding your product usable or useful, but also if they're willing to talk to others about your product. People that tend to talk to others about the product that you are creating, those are the people that are really enjoying the experience that they have with your product. They are really passionate about what your product does. Um, they are really passionate about how it does it. This way, MPS will be the closest metric that you could use to actually try to reflect if people are actually enjoying your products. So who does product design and how it is done? The reality is that this changes a lot from company to company, as in all the cases. So when you have product design, it depends on the company. If it's a small company, maybe that is just a product manager that is actually taking care of the product design. In some cases, it might be even just a front-end developer or somebody within the development team who is working more on the UI components who is just actually taking care of the product design. Uh, many times these two approaches end up in a very engineer-led design, which sometimes is not the easiest to use because of potentially overcomplicating the design. That happens easily if you are not putting a lot of thought and a lot of planning around how your designs should be working. In some other companies, you're going to have teams that are taking care of the user experience or the product design that are actually trying to look on a more holistic way of what is the experience of the users within the product and how can they improve that one and make it more enjoyable. Obviously, this potentially can help a lot to try to achieve a more enjoyable solution that when you have somebody that is not necessarily an expert in usability, in user experience, in the product design, to actually define that actual roadmap to see how the design of the product progresses. But why is product design important? Why do you need somebody to actually come and do this? Is not somebody like a product manager or, or is enough with a software engineer that has some kind of interest for usability enough for this kind of task? Well, in my opinion, usability, the same as uh, you have roadmap for features, you should also have a, a roadmap for your designs. In the end, you also have to plan. You also have to understand what is the vision that you have for the experience, for the design of your products. What do you want to achieve? What kind of experience do you want users to have? Do you care a lot? You don't? It's important to set this up because when you're doing product design as a left-hand task, the problem is that potentially you are not planning it in the long term. You're just probably trying to address one problem at a time, which means that in the end, the experience that the users are going to have when using your products are not, is not going to be cohesive. There is not a properly thought out customer journey. Many times companies talk about expert products and uh, my feeling when companies are talking about expert products is that companies are just finding in a way an excuse not to care about the product design part of their products. That they are not trying to make it easy to use for the end users. Yes, many products are going to be complicated to use, but this doesn't mean that all the users, that all the users' per personas that we were talking in the beginning, actually are going to be interacting with, or, with those more complex parts or options of your product. You don't necessarily have to expose everything to everybody that is using your product. 
One of the problems with traditional products is that they tend to be a toolbox. They tend to be a lot of options that you can actually go and set up. They can be a little bit overwhelming because of the complexity and the whole potential of use cases that you can achieve. But in, the, in reality, although the capabilities um, that the products are actually useful, they solve cases, they probably are usable, they, you can actually achieve the uh, solutions that you need for your problems, but they are not an enjoyable experience. So remember, looking into those customer personas, looking into those problems that those users are having, trying to tailor the design and the experience within your product to those users, it's going to make for a much more enjoyable experience for the end user. So do you have product designers in your company? Do you have somebody actually paying attention to the design of your products? This is something that is done a little bit with the left hand by somebody within the team, or it's just an afterthought that, oh yes, we have to create some kind of UI component for the new feature and let's just put a bunch of options there for the users to set it up and, and that's it. That's good enough for our users. Please comment below and let me know. And if you have any other thoughts about this video, about product design, as always, I would love to hear about it. I will see you in the next video, and as always, stay safe.